2023 FIA World Endurance Championship season was epic. Incredible action with record crowds. And it's where Hypercar truly came of age. This is the story of how it all unfolded. Anticipation is high for round one of the 2023 season at the challenging Sebring circuit in the heat of the Florida sunshine. I think everyone in the paddock's excited to see this, um, this big competition back when you have names like Ferrari, Porsche, Peugeot, Cadillac, um, all with a lot of history in, in, uh, in endurance racing and motorsport. Obviously some new faces as well with Van Wall, um, Glickenhaus who are returning from last year. There's some added pressure on on us at Toyota, um, obviously we've won the last few years with less competition, um, but we know our car, so I guess somehow we're the favourites, but I can assure you the other teams have been working hard, they've been preparing well, they've been doing a lot of testing, so we, we definitely don't underestimate anything, but we, we feel well prepared and yeah, excited to take the fight to the others. It's going well, yeah, so far? Yeah, it's going so far, not so many troubles, so... Yeah. I mean, it's the first time I've seen the garage. It is proper F1 standard, in my opinion, from what I can see so far here. It's... Like, you know, when Ferrari is committing to, yeah. to doing something important, I think they, they know how to do it. <laughs> I said, these things have such a distinct sound. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I mean, it's it's a fan favorite. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I have more than a fan favorite. We've gotten quite compliments from our competitors and everything else too. Yeah. So that's good. But we have a cool identity to play with, and it looks good too. It's not just hypercar where there'll be plenty of action. LMP2 will be as close as ever, and equally, GTE Am is going to be a tough fight. See you around. And it's locked. Ah. <laughs> Green flag for the start of the, for, of the first of two formation lines. We have the flag for the start of two formation lines. The Stars and Stripes wave, and away we go for the 1,000 miles of Sebring. The season opener Ferrari on pole position as they return to top flight sports cars for the first time in half a century. Battle for third, Ferrari and Toyota side by side. Conway on the inside, Alessandro Pierre Guidi running out of road. Through goes the Toyota. The yellow Corvette, Ben Keating, down the inside, but Sara Bovi, the GTE and pole sitter, holds on in the pink Porsche. Oh, trouble behind. Luis Perez compact from third place. Barrel rolls the Ferrari. <laughs> He just carried in far too much speed and there's nowhere to go. Safety cars out for recovery. Lilo Wadu, one of his teammates there. Their race is over, but Luis Perez Compact fortunately walks away unscathed. Lee Ferrari in the pits under the safety car. Ferrari pitting both cars now. This will be fuel only, trying to give them a few more options for strategy calls in the course of the race. First ever race for this brand new Ferrari 499P. They're learning all about how to run it, how to strategize the races best. Alessandro Pierre Guidi looking frustrated with a slightly long stop as Toyota move up to go 1-2. Sebastian Buemi, the race leader. Information, the pit line, car 15, drive through penalty for overtaking another car before the end of the safety car procedure. This is the offence, Antonio Fuoco, the pole sitter in the 50 Ferrari. There is the D station Aston, he passes it, but before the start finish line. 
Third place battle, Clash of the Titans, the Blue Nose, the Cadillac of Alex Lynn, piling the pressure on Lawrence Van Tor in one of the Penske Porsches. Both cars new to the series this season. Lynn threw on the inside with that V8 rumble. Here's trouble, Rahel Fry in the GTE Am leading Porsche, runs wide, loses the entire rear underbody and bumper. An emergency fuel stop has hurt the number eight Toyota. They're chasing their teammates in number seven. Brendan Hartley closing in on Kamui Kobayashi. Ferrari in trouble. That's Alessandro Pierre Guidi in the 51 car, hitting the 54 Ferrari GTE car. Into the pit lane comes the damaged Ferrari. Falcon 9 rocket just blasted off from Cape Canaveral down the road. And that's got a 22,000 kilometers an hour top speed. Dorian Pan watching the battle. Her teammate just ahead of Hertz Team Jota's Will Stevens. The leaders in the pit lane, LMP2 leader Premers Mirko Bortolotti, a desperate splash and dash inside the final four minutes. And Will Stevens will take the lead of LMP2. Checker flag awaits. It will be Toyota number seven that leads a team 1 2 in Sebring. Toyota Gazoo Racing have really shown their class here in Sebring. They know their car intimately, and their rivals have a lot of work to do to catch up. You know, I think uh, today is just the start of the big race coming for 2023. So for sure we need work, we need to improve, but definitely I'm looking forward to this championship. It's going to be coming really, really exciting. Jota wins LMP2, but it's not a full season entry, so maximum points go to the 22 car from United Autosports. An American win in GTEM, Corvette Racing claim victory in Sebring. For round two, we've moved to Europe and the heat of the Portuguese Algarve as we return to the roller coaster circuit at Portimao. With the difference in elevation, this makes, uh, makes the track very uh, unique. Where we sit uh, more or less now in the last corner, coming out with uh, really high speed over the, uh, I, I tend to call it a jump because uh, the cargo is quite light and then uh, going uh, to the back of the circuit in the second sector in the roller coaster. So it's, uh, it's a really nice track. Green flag, start of the formation lap. Start of the formation lap. Okay, man, you're free to go. The all Toyota front row leads us into the six hours of Portimao. All Ferrari Road 2 challenging hard. Remy on the inside, the pole man. And around the outside, Mike Conway, the second Toyota, takes the lead. And the second Ferrari, James Collado, up to second. In the pack, Dane Cameron's Porsche makes contact with the Peugeot on his left. Challenge here from Sebastian Webby for second place. Doesn't get by James Collado in turn one. The Ferrari runs out wide and Buemi is through in the Toyota. It is now a Toyota 1-2 again. Into the pit lane, coming in hot. Richard Westbrook in the Cadillac just avoids the Peugeot. On board, look how close this was. Massive lockup as they come down to 60 kilometers an hour. Number seven Toyota in the pits was the race leader. Mike Conway being pushed back. This is the crew that won round one in Sebring. So there are championship leaders. On board with Kevin Estra in the number six Porsche. Right in front is the tail of Antonio Giovinazzi's Ferrari. Giovinazzi being told to cool his brakes. And look at this, Kevin Estra goes straight by on the inside. The Penske Porsche up to third place. That'll please the team boss, the captain, 86 years young, Roger Penske. 
Looking back at Earl Bamba's Cadillac from the Peugeot of Gustavo Menezes after a tough time in Sebring. The Peugeot seems to be going much better on a traditional smooth European race circuit. After that big lockup entering the pits from Richard Westbrook, the caddy needed a tyre. And it's slightly out of sequence, but Earl Bamba goes through into the top five. LMP2 leading United Auto Sports in the pit lane. They're running one, two. Gerda van der Gaard is staying in, but Oli Jarvis running around going, get out, get out, get out. Wasn't sure that there was due to be a driver change. Time lost in the pits is always critical in an endurance race. Huge amount of brake dust coming off the Ferraris. This place is tough on brakes. Alessandro Pierguidi in the 51 Ferrari. He stopped down at the hairpin. He's got the car going again, but have they got braking trouble? He's having to come all the way through the gravel trap to rejoin, but does so safely. Replay coming down to the hairpin. Sounds like he's using the gearbox to slow the car. I think the front right disc is broken. I think so, there's something wrong with me. Last lap battle in GTEM, the yellow Corvette, Nicky Katzberg, the Sebring winners hanging on desperately under attack from Alessia Rivera with fresher tyres on his Ferrari. Second in Sebring, winners in Portimao, the crew of Toyota number eight, Brendan Hartley takes the chequered flag with five different brands in the top five, but Toyota still the team to beat. Yeah, happy. It's been an awesome weekend from FP1 all the way through to now. I, th I thought for Car 7, um, they were keeping us honest. Actually, they, took, they overtook us at the start. We got back in front and then they, they had a problem. In LMP2, it's the United Auto Sports 1-2. And despite their radio communication issues, it's the number 23 car that comes out on top. After an incredible rear guard action, it is Nicky Katzberg who takes the GTE and win in the Corvette. Corvette racing now two for two. Round three, the legendary Spa Francorchamps in Belgium, and despite the cold weather, a record crowd of almost 75,000 fans here to see their heroes. A little history for Hertz Team Jota as they debut their brand new hypercar, the Porsche 963. Big moment. This ambitious team is the first to bring a customer hypercar to the World Endurance Championship. <laughs> right now, mate. Right, did you watch it? Oh, yeah, it is, huh? Whoa, it's good. Whoa, very good. Let's see you come back. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it will. Check. Rain just before the start means mixed strategies here at Spa. Here we go, Toyota's Mike Conway leads them away, wipers on, Ferrari's in either mirror. He's on slicks, the Ferraris and the blue caddy of Earl Bamba are on wets and the Toyota runs out perilously close to the gravel trap. Loses the lead, it's three wide behind, more cars in trouble. It is the 51 car that leads. Antonio Giovinazzi from Nick Nielsen in 50. Earl Bamba, the blue caddy in third place. Mike Conway down to fourth. But, oh, big moment for Conway. Can he even keep it on the road? Pass goes to Hertz Team Jota, Porsche 963. Turn one with Conway, just didn't have the grip on those slicks. Really good job. Let's try and manage these tires as well as we can. Look for the wet, look for the wet. 
The teams are going to have to double stint the wets, but it's not going to rain long enough. Slicks are being prepared at Peugeot, and here comes Mike Conway. Well, there's the indicator now. A slick tyre is the tyre to have. Those on wets are going to have to change unless it rains. On board with Conway, challenging for the lead. Antonio Giovinazzi right in front, and here comes Conway. All the grip in the world on the now dry racing line. Nick Nielsen, the 50 Ferrari in the pit lane. They should have brought 51 in as well. Peugeot were in for slicks too. Maybe Ferrari are trying to get the 51 car to stay out until its pit window opens for fuel as well. Toyota's Sebastian Wemmy in the slipstream of Glickenhaus driver Roman Dumas. The Toyota started last after a crash before qualifying from Brendan Hartley, left them with no time set. Now on slick tyres, he's up to fifth. Lead battle in GTE Am and Tomino Bufuji in the D station Aston Martin pushing Sara Bovi all the way over onto the wet grass at high speed. I'm sure the officials will look at that and he could well be in for a penalty there. Yellow nose Cadillac of Renga van der Zander in second place. The Ferraris, seventh and eighth, trying to catch him on. Van der Zander's off and hard into the barriers there at Eau Rouge. On the way up to Redion, a massive impact that has absolutely destroyed the car right under the brand new grandstand. Is he okay? Safety car immediately, no question. Ah, oh, that's great news. He is out of the car. Warm applause from the crowd. But what happened? In a rouge, bottoms and just goes completely off into the barriers. That is brutal but at least he is okay. He never turned right. Looks like it just locked up straight away. Because, I mean, do you see the sparks? Yeah, the sparks is offline. It's just one because you're going so hard in the compression. Tight battle for the LMP2 lead. 41 is Louis Delatraz, 31 his teammate, and that is Ferdy Habsburg. Both cars run by WRT, based here just about a 20 minute drive from the circuit, and Habsburg has taken the lead from his teammate. Lilu Wadu pressuring Zach Rubichon for the GTE AM lead. The 22 year old pulls out of the slipstream of the Porsche as she's through on the inside. Classic spa move. consternation in Ferrari. What's happened? That's Antonio Fuoco has just left the pit lane. The car snaps sideways, no tyre warmers, stone cold tyres and no traction at all and hard into the barriers and that is the end of the race for the number 50 Ferrari. Miguel Molina can't believe it either. He's Antonio Fuoco's teammate. There's Nick Nielsen, their third driver. Fuoco is heartbroken. Last lap of the race here at Spa. James Collado all over the back of Porsche's Fred Makaviki. This is for third place, a spot on the podium behind the Toyota 1-2. They're loving that. It is Kamui Kobayashi, the crew of the number seven Toyota win again, their second win of the season, and another Toyota 1 2. Yeah, I mean, all my teammates did a really solid stint, all of them. So, uh, yeah, all credit to the guys and everyone on, the, on car seven. And obviously, car eight, mega job as well, coming back from, uh, you know, the issue they had yesterday in qualifying and coming all the way from the back of the grid to, to P2. So, yeah, great team result. And, um, yeah, can't say enough for the guys. Did a great job. Third race of the season and a third different winner in LMP2. The first for local team WRT. 41 wins with Rui Andrade, Robert Kubica and Louis Delachaz. The GTE AM win goes to the 83 Ferrari, meaning history as Leela Wadu becomes the first female driver to win an FIA World Championship race.
24 Hours of Le Mans is always special, but this year even more so as it is the centenary of this legendary race. Around 325,000 fans have been treated to a phenomenal parade of Le Mans winners, both cars and drivers who have made their mark on this race. This race, Le Mans, uh, means the pinnacle of our sport. Uh, it's something that we as drivers hunt for victory every year. It's impossible to test here. Um, it's not like any place on earth where we can go there, we can practice, we can prepare. Here we only have the race week, we have one day testing, and then we are quick fire into the race. And when it goes right, it's, it's beautiful. When it goes wrong, it, it's painful, and you have to wait another 365 days to have another chance at, at conquering it. Good luck, man. Okay. Ready to go. Yeah. Big race. Yes, mate. Only one winner. The special centenary trophy delivered by the safe hands of Mr. Le Mans, Tom Christensen, and the Chickler arriving in style as ever. Handed to NBA superstar LeBron James, who has the honour of starting this great race. The traditional flyby by the Patrouille de France, raising the stakes even higher. LeBron James flags the field away. 24 hours to go, Ferrari locked out the front row in qualifying ahead of Porsche and Toyota. And it is Nick Nielsen who leads from James Collado. Sebastian Buemi trying for second to lock up behind from a Porsche. They all survive. It is a Ferrari 1-2. That lockup was Felipe Nasser on the damp track. Everybody just about surviving contact there with the Porsche of the Cadillac. Down the Walsan straight, Sebastian Buemi attacking Nicolas Nielsen. He takes the lead of the race. Applause from the number eight team garage. And here comes the number seven car. Straight down the inside, Mike Conway goes by as well. Toyota may not have had the qualifying pace in Hyperpole, but they are the team to beat in the race. Toyota is on soft, they will struggle with tires, start to put some pressure on them. We want to put some pressure on Toyota, they are on soft, they start to struggle. Toyota's early race pace is fading, here comes Nicholas Nielsen, here comes James Collado as well, attacking Mike Conway, the seventh Toyota, for second place. Down into Mulsan corner, the Ferrari squeezes through on the inside. A week of beautiful weather, and it looks like it has broken. Rain at Le Mans, and here comes the Peugeot. Down the inside of the Penske Porsche for fourth place. They've just gone by the Jota Porsche as well, and the third place Ferrari is right ahead. The French Peugeot team loving this. A sudden deluge and the safety car's out, the WRT car on the grass. Look at the Glickenhaus, Esteban Gutierrez. Oh, and the Ferrari just clips him going in. Jean-Eric Van in the Peugeot, a half spin at Mulsanne corner into the gravel. Toyota left it to the end of the safety car period to pit for slicks. The blue nosed Cadillac, that's Alex Lynn. He was battling with the Porsche of Dane Cameron, but look at the Ferraris coming steaming by all three cars. Peugeot and Porsche out front. That's Hertz Team Jota battling the 94 Peugeot. The Jota car takes the lead, and the Ferraris are leaning on Dane Cameron. The number five Penske Porsche, it is all action. Behind the lapped Peugeot is the lead battle. The gold Porsche, Yippee Yee. Attacking hard, and Gustavo Menezes in the Peugeot fighting back, but here comes Dane Cameron. Third to second in the multicolored Penske Porsche. Porsche 1-2. That's the Jota Porsche, that's the race leader. Yiffy Yi at the entrance to the Porsche curves has gone off heavily. 
down into the Porsche curves, too much speed, maybe got onto the damp and backs it hard into the barriers. Yiffy Yi is in the Jota pit, but that car will need a lot of work. Trouble for Dane Cameron, the number five Porsche, very slow on the Mulsanne straight. He was in second place, but the American now plunging down the order. This year's Garage 56 entry for cars outside the normal rule set is the 75th anniversary celebratory NASCAR Camaro. Jensen Button, the Formula One world champion, with Mike Rockefeller and Jimmy Johnson bringing more smiles per mile than anyone else and bringing NASCAR pit stops to the pit lane. Driver changes via the window might be new to Jensen Button, but standard stuff for Jimmy Johnson. Oh, a car wrecked, that's in the S's. That's an number seven Toyota. What happens in a slow zone? Somebody stopping very much quicker than the others and catching them out. That's Kamui Kobayashi's view. That's the JMW Ferrari of Louis Pret. We have to try to start the engine. The only way to come back is try to use the engine. Just try to burn out, try everything. We have to use the engine. We don't have enough sock to come back with the front motor. It's too early. The only way is to come back with the engine. Do what you can. Desperate times for number seven Toyota crew. Kamui Kobayashi jumps to safety. The red lights are on. The car could be live. And that means it will take no further part in the race. On board with Gustavo Menezes in Peugeot 94, runs out of road into the barriers on the Mulsanne chicane. That's a real blow for the Peugeot team. They had been looking very strong. New nose waiting to go on. Gustavo Menezes back in the pit lane with shredded tires and bodywork. Battle for the lead in LMP2. Robert Kubitzer for Team WRT, the winners in Spa, into Europol, perhaps the smallest team in the entire paddock with Fabio Scherer giving chase. Scherer driving with a suspected broken foot after his foot was run over by the Corvette in the pit lane. But I bet he's feeling no pain now as he sweeps around for the lead. Race leader under pressure, Sebastian Buemi. Here comes Alessandro Pierre Guidi in the 51 Ferrari. Down the Mulsanne straight. Has he got the chance to get by? He's got a tiny overlap. Should be just enough on the brakes, on the racing line. Well, he fights it hard. Exactly what you need at Le Mans. But it's Alessandro Pierre Guidi who leads for Ferrari. Closing stages at Le Mans and the battle is on. Okay, Rio, the gap is 16.0. The gap is 16.0. Let's hunt him down. Toyota pushing hard with Rio Hirakawa. They know they can win this race. Up behind the United LMP2 car, down to Arnage, Rio Hirakawa. Oh, big locker! Loses the rear, hits the barriers, front and rear. Is that the end of the battle for victory? Still over 100 minutes to go at Le Mans. Richard Westbrook in the number two Cadillac. Despite problems and pit stops, they're chasing down the Toyota for second. Hirakawa back out of the pit lane. And the Ferrari, number 51, with a strong lead. Final fuel stop for Alessandro Pierre Guidi, our race leader. 51 Ferrari, there's John Elkin watching from overhead, the Ferrari chairman. And again, as a couple of hours ago, the car refuses to start. Again, he's going to have to completely reset the car. Is this the race coming to Toyota? Toyota.
Toyota's hopes have been crushed. For the first time in 50 years, Ferrari returned to Le Mans with a factory sports car team at the top level. And now they are going to claim victory in the biggest Le Mans race of them all. The centenary race goes to the 51 Ferrari crew. Their last win, 1965. Le Mans winners, Alessandro Pier Guidi, James Collado and Antonio Giovinazzi. Ferrari has done it. It's something incredible, I'm so thankful for the team. Whatever happened in this race, I'm just, I was so proud of them. It's their fourth race and we've won them on. It's something truly incredible. The car is amazing to drive. It's superb, it really is a dream. You feel that when you're driving it. And thank you to, to Ferrari. A phenomenal victory in LMP2 for Inter-Europol competition. The first Polish team to win at Le Mans. Fabio Sierra, despite that broken foot, bringing it to the line. After early problems, GTE and victory for Corvette Racing, they claim the last GTE victory at Le Mans. The centenary Le Mans race, breathtaking from start to finish. The history-making Ferrari team celebrate their victory at Le Mans with a parade around the streets of Maranello, their hometown. <laughs> Round five at Italy's Cathedral of Speed. The Autodromo Nazionale di Monza and the Tifosi are here to worship their Ferrari heroes. A lot of Tifosi, so let's do a good race. We are racing in Monza. Pole man is Mike Conway in the number seven Toyota from Miguel Molina who tucks in behind. Sebastian Buemi, number eight Toyota, looking to come down the inside, trying to take second. He won't get there, but Molina going the long way around the outside. Can't quite keep it on the island. And Giovinazzi facing the wrong way in the 51 Ferrari. It was Sebastian Buemi who spun out the 51 Ferrari. LMP2 leader is the 23 United Auto Sports car. Lots of debris down at the Variante Ascari. What's happened there? Weaving their way through. D station off in the gravel. Under braking, Sebastian Buemi slammed Satoshi Hoshino's Aston into the barriers. Sorry with how everything is unfolding. I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm sorry, guys. One minute stop and go penalty, car eight for a contact with car triple seven. Change for third place coming up, jean eric Verne in the Peugeot that made its debut here 12 months earlier and going well here, taking third place from the triple stinting Porsche of Michael Christensen. Second place battle in GTEM, that's Nico Veroni's Corvette going by. That's the view from him. Sara Bovi impeded by an LMP2 car. Easy pickings. Glickenhaus oh. under pressure from Ferrari. Olivier Pla down into the first chicane. Right behind him is James Collado. Oh, and Pla over the curbs, carried in too much speed. Collado goes right by for fourth. 
LMP2 leader Robin Fry is back in the pit lane and going into the garage. WRC have been chasing an issue with the car and it's clearly not fixed. Into the pits from the lead comes Sharma Lacey for Alpine. Chota's Pietro Filipaldi moves up into the lead in LMP2. Rines is out of the 31 WRT car. It's all over. The checker flag awaits. The crew run to the pit wall. And here comes Toyota number seven. Another race win for Toyota. Number seven back in the championship hunt again. They wanted to avenge themselves for losing out at Le Mans to Ferrari. And they have beaten the Italians on home ground. After a, a top Le Mans, yeah, it was important to, to bounce back. Um, yeah, the team did a, a great job. Yeah, it, it feels nice, you know, third win on the, of the year. Uh, we've been some, a bit unlucky, but yeah, this, this put us again on the game, so really happy. In LMP2, the 28 car from Jota struck gold, having claimed the lead in the closing stages. Victory in GTE for Dempsey Proton's 77 Porsche. But the driver's title with two races left has gone to the crew of the Corvette. Ben Keating, Nicky Katzberg and Nico Veroni. Ben. Thank you. We still got two more races to play, That's too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> After a summer break, the competition resumes in Japan in the shadow of Mount Fuji round six of the championship, a race that could almost be powered by the enthusiasm of the fans who come along to support their heroes. It's amazing to see how passionate you are about motorsport and it's a pleasure to race in front of you, so thank you. The fans' passion is infectious. It can't help but rub off on the teams and drivers that race here. Conway leads us across the line for the six out of Fuji. A Toyota lockout at the front row in qualifying at home, but look down the inside. Here comes the Porsche of Lawrence Van Tor. Big slide. Can he hold it together? I think he does. No contact. He takes the lead. Conway was right out on the curbs. From James Collado, watch the viewers. Everybody locks up and runs out wide. And the Ferraris both sneak through. Battle for second place, Mike Conway in the number seven Toyota. Down the inside of Miguel Molina's Ferrari. Toyota coming back into the race, but a big lock up there. Can he hold on to it? Molina coming back at Conway. Just doesn't have enough. Corvette Racing leading in GTE Am. Ben Keating doing an incredible long stint on the fuel here. The new world champion. Car 33-3-3. Has a 30 second, 30 seconds, stop and go penalty for causing a collision with car 54. Keating made contact with a silver Ferrari of fellow AM driver Thomas Floor. Keating in the pits, door changed because the position marker lights have been broken in that impact and he still has the penalty to serve. With Rear Hirokawa. That is teammate Jose Maria Lopez right in front and the leading Porsche just a couple of cars up the road. Lopez couldn't get by. Looks like they're waving Hirokawa past for him to have a go at the Porsche. That makes a lot of sense strategy-wise from the Toyota team.
Looking back from the race leader, Kevin Esch in the Porsche, and there is Rio Hirakawa, the Toyota, shaping up for a move on the inside. He faints and then goes late down into the hairpin. That is the lead for Toyota with just two hours of the race remaining. Heavy smoke now from the front of Earl Bamba's caddy and the wheel has come off. That's why it was smoking. The caddy's back in the pits now. They'll have to figure out why it shed a wheel. Toyota Gazoo Racing 1-2 at home. Okay, they have passed a lot of high speed. But then I have a lot of voters to entry. Medium low. We're lost your mask just on quarter break off. Here comes the change. Kamu Kobayashi comes down the racing line. Hartley moves to one side. Number eight with technical issues makes sense to put seven in front. Battle for fourth place is a battle. 51 Ferrari ahead, but here comes the 50 car. Antonio Fuoco passing Alessandro Pierre Guidi. Lead battle in LMP2, here comes Robert Kubica down the inside of United Auto Sports. Ben Hanley, the WRT driver, takes the lead. It is the two United and two WRT cars that are battling for supremacy here. On board now with Philip Albuquerque in the 22 United car, down the inside of the hairpin, goes by Ben Hanley for second in LMP2. Now, can he chase down the race leader? Toyota number seven heading to victory here at Fuji in Japan. It is a Toyota Gazoo Racing 1-2 on home soil as Kamui Kobayashi leads them to the flag. And Toyota seals the manufacturer's title. Okay, Kamui, great job. I mean, at start, I think my gut difficult time honestly i think to overthink in this track is not easy at all but i think once we became clear i think the pace wise i think was uh, quite brilliant so thanks for the team and of course thanks for uh, all the fans coming here to support us the lmp2 winners wrt's number 41 crew and they extend their points advantage Thomas Floor, Francesco Castellacci and David Rigon claim their first GTE AM win of the season. Kingdom of Bahrain is the venue for the season finale of the FIA World Endurance Championship. There's a two-wheel legend here, MotoGP star Valentino Rossi, ready to watch all the drama unfold in the final battle of 2023. Sebastian Webby leads another Toyota lockout front row as we head into the eight hours of Bahrain, the season finale, down to turn one, big luck up from the Cadillac of Earl Bamba. And he turns around Mike Conway, the number seven Toyota, in the very first corner. And that could be the end of their championship chances. Oh, there's trouble, Van Wall spinning and an Alpine and uh, United cars as well there in LMP2. Are the two Ferraris just ahead of the Peugeot Porsche battle? Take a look at the start. This big lockup from Earl Bamba. He just tags Mike Conway. Everybody else escapes unharmed, I think. But then there's trouble in the midfield. Bamba comes in, locked up and out of control, and Conway goes around. On board with United, there's the number four Van Wall car, and the 23 United car hits 22 as well. One minute stop and go penalty for Earl Bamba after that contact. And that's a shame for Cadillac. They started third, their best qualifying result so far. Looking back from Mike Conway, that is a number 50 Ferrari. And that means that Conway is now up to fourth place. Up the inside of the Jota Porsche for third. An astonishing comeback from Mike Conway. 
Dramatic looking brake fire on Kevin Escher's Porsche. Not enough to worry the team. Brakes run at around 700 degrees Celsius when they're being used hard here. That's why they are on fire in the pit stop. That'll all go out once the car leaves, so no major drama despite the dramatic blaze. Around half the race here in Bahrain run in darkness. Out of the pit lane comes the Ferrari of Alessandro Pierre Guidi and Will Stevens in the gold Jota Porsche. Look how slow they are on their unheated tyres. Battle for fourth place now, Antonio Fuoco, the second of the Ferraris, all over Will Stevens. He pitted a lap or two earlier, his tyres fully up to temperature. It's like taking candy off a baby, and now he's attacking his own teammate, the 51 car. Down the inside, he's on the dirt, and he makes contact, goes straight through the corner. Oh, that was rash. Comes back on. And the 51 still not up to temperature with its tyres. Fuoco again off track on the inside, trying to go by for third place. This is heady stuff from the Ferrari teammates. Not sure Alessandro Pierre Guidi was expecting this. Fuoco came charging too deep on the inside. Fuoco gave the place back for passing off track, but now reclaims third. Pierre Guidi on the outside, his tyres still not as hot as his teammates. Looking calmer in the pits than they probably feel, and Alessandro Pierre Guidi can't be happy. I'm quicker. Yeah, I can see that. Just be careful, man. He has no manners. Here comes Will Stevens in the gold Jota Porsche down the inside into turn one to take fourth place away from Alessandro Pierre Guidi's Ferrari. Jota's 963 has been the fastest Porsche all the way through the race. LMP2 leader in the pits, Robin Freins in the 31 car from WRT. Problem with the left front, it seems. They have to use a different wheel gun, it still won't come off. These guys have had little luck this season. But WRT will be back next year with the team and Van Sam Vos running BMW's hypercar program. WRT's 41 car now takes the LMP2 lead. They are heading towards victory and the title. Brendan Hartley heading to victory and the championship here. Oh, a spin in front from the 21 Ferrari. Leader avoids him, continues on his way. Toyota Gazoo Racing heading to another 1-2 result. There's Sara Bovi in the Iron Dames garage, teammate Rahel Fry. They are waiting for the chequered flag to claim the last ever GTE win and the first for Iron Dames. WRT await the title. Robert Kubica and Rui Andrade watching Louis Delatraz heading to a WRT 1-2 here in LMP2. The flag is out, the season is over. The champions are the number eight Toyota crew. Brendan Hartley, Rio Hirakawa and Sebastian Buemi take the crown. Such a nice feeling with Rio, Seb. I think we've worked really hard for this all year. Le Mans was, was tough to take, but it's been a pretty faultless year. Other than that, the, the team's been setting the benchmarks. We did the job and I'm um, very happy. A third LMP2 win for the 41 WRT crew. The champions are Rui Andrade, Robert Kubica and Louis Delatraz. While WRT are once more the LMP2 team champions. A great way for team boss Van Sam Vos and his crew to prepare for their hypercar journey. The last GTE win goes to the Iron Dames. The first ever FIA World Championship win for an all-female crew. Every step will test your soul. Celebrating the last race, Corvette Racing, World Champion Drivers and Team's titles confirmed. With all the racing done, only one task remains. Partying through the night on the beach at the WEC Awards. Right 
If you want to get right behind the scenes of all the action in the races, go online and check out WEC Full Access. It's been an amazing season, but that is it for 2023. The racing looks set to be even more exciting in 2024, with even more manufacturers heading to the FIA World Endurance Championship. We will see you there.